All right, we're going to do some related rates problems. Um, I think related rates and optimization are the two most feared or stressful topics in Calc 1. Uh, but for both of those topics, there's a step-by-step -step process you can follow that really helps um, make it a little bit more um, approachable. Okay. So I made a video on optimization with the step-by-step -step process. This is my video for related rates. There's a problem up here I just got from ChatGPT. I said, give me a very basic uh, related rates problem. Uh, and it's like a cylinder and it's filling up with water. And then you want to find the rate at which the water level is rising. So to make sure this is very simple, let's assume that the cylinder is right side up. Uh, the first step in solving any related rates problem is to draw two pictures. First one is a generic picture that is true uh, at all moments of time for the situation given. So here's my generic picture and it's got our cylinder right side up, a uh, radius of four meters, which is constant, it doesn't change, so it's, we put it in our generic one. Uh, and then a height, which does change with time, so we just label it as H. Um, and then we have water flowing in at two meters cubed per minute. Um, in your generic picture, like I did labeling H, you want to label your variables. So what is, how can we represent this uh, two meters cubed per minute uh, with a variable? How can, we, how can we describe that symbolically? Um, this is a volumetric flow rate. It's like volume per time. So that's the rate of change of volume with respect to time. So dv dt. Next step, once we've got all our generic info in there, is we're going to write uh, or draw a picture that's specific to the instant in time that it wants us to solve for whatever. So let me draw an instant. All right, here's our picture uh, at the instant in time that it wants us to solve for uh, the rate at which the water level is rising. The only thing different in this specific problem is that we're uh, calling h equal to three, mil three meters. Um, and other problems, like we'll do a hard one next. Uh, you'll get a lot, a lot new stuff added to your instant picture. But I just want to follow this process so you can see how it works with something real easy. Then we can apply that same process to a much harder problem. And you'll see how it's helpful. After you do step one, which is draw your two pictures. Next step, do you want to write down the goal of the problem? Because you want to uh, make sure you don't lose sight of that. So step two is uh, write out your goal, which in this case is to find um, the, what does it say? The rate at which the water level is rising. Uh, which, what is that symbolically? That's uh, the rate of change of the height with respect to time. So that would be dh dt. Uh, but you want to find dh dt, dt, the instant when the water is 3 meters deep. So when h equals 3. After step 2, step 3 is that you write an equation uh, from your generic photo uh, that relates all of the variables together. So let's do that. So step three, relate variables from your generic drawing. So how can we relate some of the variables in this picture? So we've got the height of our water level. We've got V for volume. We've got uh, the radius R. We could write the, this is kind of where the creativity comes in in the harder problems. This one, it's kind of obvious. Like maybe you can just write V in terms of H and R with the formula for the volume of a cylinder. Uh, but other problems you have to get a little bit more creative and we'll see that in the next one. Uh, but to relate the variables in this case, we could just say volume is equal to pi r squared h. That's the volume of a cylinder. So that's how we'll relate them. And again, we want to look at our generic picture for this. Volume equals pi r squared h. Uh, and specifically, uh, r in the context of this problem is constant. Uh, that's why it's in our generic picture as specifically equal to four because it never changes. So I'm going to plug that in for R. So I'm going to get V equals pi times four squared H. So I'm going to get V equals 16 pi H. Once you relate your variables from the generic drawing, the next step in any related rates problem is to differentiate uh, with respect to what makes sense in the problem. So in this case, uh, if you look back at step two, our goal is to find uh, dh dt. So we're probably going to want to differentiate 
our equation in step three with respect to time. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do d dt. All right, so these are pretty easy derivatives. The left side, we just get dv dt, which we know is two, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. So the left, we get dv dt. The right, we uh, get 16 pi. We can pull those out of the derivative because they don't change with respect to time. And then d dt of h is dh dt. Once we differentiate, I didn't write that, but this is, uh, this is what you're doing in step four. After you differentiate, uh, the next step in any related rates problem is you want to evaluate this new equation you got after differentiating uh, at the instant given. So you would take a look at this instant picture. So evaluate at instant given. So showing all this work might uh, come across as overkill for this problem because it's pretty straightforward, uh, the problem is. But having this framework is going to help you a lot when you come across more complex problems. Uh, but in this case, evaluating at the instant given, we really aren't plugging in much of anything except dv dt. Because the height being equal to 3 doesn't even matter in this case. Uh, if you had a cone shape, there's a lot of related rates problems with cones then the height would matter because the radius is a function of height. It's not a constant. And you can watch plenty of videos on how to solve related rates problems with cones. Um, but in this case, I just want to pick a very simple problem. And the only thing that we need to plug in from the instant given is that dv dt uh, is 2. And technically, that's not even from the instant. But we'll plug that in. So we get 2 equals 16 pi dh dt. And then you just isolate. So then step six is solve. Because then you can just isolate what you're trying to get, which is dh dt, if you remember from step two, which is our goal. And then uh, simplify. So the rate of change of the water level with respect to time at the instant when the height is three meters, but in this problem at any instant, is one over eight pi meters per minute. And that's your answer. So let's take the same framework and do a much, much more challenging related rates problem. Okay, you ready? I have it over here. So this one uh, says that there's this person running along a fence and then someone else standing below it and they're shining a flashlight at the person running and it wants to it wants us to find out the rate of the rate of change, the rate that the person is turning the flashlight as the person's running. And so you get triangles, you get all these things that you need to work out. So first step, just uh, because it's the first step, but also to help you guys get a better picture of this problem, let's draw our two pictures. So our generic picture, we have this long fence and uh, somebody is running along the fence in this direction. And then we have an observer who is standing 80 feet from the fence. So this you can assume is a right angle. And they're shining a flashlight uh, at the person running. Um, so that direction that they're shining the flashlight makes the hypotenuse this right triangle. And uh, what else do we know generically? Um, I think this is it. So in your generic picture, you want to define your variables. So let's call this leg of the right triangle x, because it's kind of like in the x direction. Then we can call this hypotenuse d, because that's the distance between the two people. And then 80 feet is a constant throughout all throughout the, the whole course of the problem. So we don't need a variable for that. We'll just call it 80. Then our instantaneous picture, uh, what more data do we have? So it says, uh, when the distance between her and the runner is 100 feet, so that would be this hypotenuse, um, the person is running 9 feet per second. Um, so let's let's incorporate that into our drawing. One other thing we should add to the generic picture is this angle here. We can call it theta. Because ultimately we want to know the rate at which she's turning the flashlight. So we're going to want something like d theta dt. Um, so I'll put that in both our pictures here. And this distance here, x, uh, we can, it doesn't tell us in the problem, but we can solve for it with Pythagorean theorem. Or if you're clever, you can notice that this is a three, four, five right triangle. So this uh, distance here, x, has to equal 60 feet. And then it says that the person is running nine feet per second. 
So that's at a rate of nine feet per second. So the rate tells us that uh, dx dt is equal to um, nine feet per second, but you wanna make sure you get the sign right because the length of that line segment is decreasing with time. It's decreasing by nine feet per second. So this is negative nine feet per second. Um, so we did our first step. So we drew our two pictures. Next step is identify the goal. What is the goal? What are we trying to find? So if we go back to the problem, it says, what at, at this moment, uh, what rate is she turning the flashlight to keep the runner illuminated? Uh, so as I kind of mentioned earlier, we want to find d theta dt uh, equals what at the instant given. All right, so who remembers step three? Step three, you have all these variables in your drawings. You know what your goal is. A lot of times this is where people who aren't following a framework like this feel kind of overwhelmed and lose some confidence, start to get a little bit stressed out, keep looking at the clock, realize they're running out of time on their test. But we have this step-by-step -step process. Uh, we know what to do next, which is we want to relate all of our variables with the uh, equation. So what equations are on offer to us to relate things like theta, x, maybe d? Um, I think it's pretty obvious it's going to be some sort of trigonometry. Uh, but we have to decide, do we want to do like sine of theta, cosine of theta, tan of theta? Um, remember, you want to write your equation from the generic picture uh, because that's true of all, for all time. And then later you'll plug in the data from your instantaneous picture. So let's look over here. So we have theta, x, and d. d changes with time. And we don't know anything about how it changes with time. X, however, we know that dx dt is negative 9. So I, I want to use x. Um, we have to use theta because our goal, written in step 2, is to find d theta dt. So we need theta in our equation. And then 80 stays the same. So I'm thinking tangent. I'm thinking tangent of theta equals x over 80. I think that'll get us the best results. And again, that this is probably the hardest step, is figuring out with your own creativity and foresight of how it's going to play out down the road in the problem, uh, coming up with the right equation, the best equation uh, in step three. But for the reasons mentioned uh, a second ago, I think tangent of theta equals x over 80 is going to work out for us. It's a pretty simple equation, so now we just got to take the derivative. Step four is differentiate. And again, like the last problem, we're going to want to differentiate with respect to time. So I'll do ddt on both sides. So the derivative of tangent theta with respect to time, we're going to have to do a little bit of the chain rule. Derivative of tangent secant squared, and then you multiply by d theta dt. And then on the right side, we do derivative of x over 80 is 1 over 80, and then times derivative of x with respect to t. So that's dx dt. And uh, we're looking pretty good. The reason why I think that is because all of the stuff in here, except for what we're trying to solve for, d theta dt, we know what we can plug in for it. Uh, because step five, evaluate with uh, at the instant given. So the instant given, so we have the secant squared theta term. We know what secant, it might not be obvious right away, but we do know what secant squared theta has to be at this instant because secant is one over cosine, and then cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 80 over 100, that's just some number. So we know that secant squared theta is just gonna evaluate some number. We're trying to solve for d theta dt, one over 80 is a constant, and then dx dt is given to us in the problem, negative nine. So step five is evaluate all of these different uh, terms, parameters, whatever you wanna call it, at the instant given, and then we'll just solve for d theta dt. So right, if I haven't said it before, step five, step, first of all, step three always comes from the generic picture. Step five always comes from your instant picture. So evaluating this equation that we got after uh, differentiating, we need to find secant squared theta. So let me write that out on the side here. Just let's start with secant of theta. That's one over cosine of theta. And Again, this is at the instant given. So for this specific triangle, where this distance is 100 and our uh, 
perpendicular distance to the fence is 80. So the cosine of theta in this triangle is adjacent over hypotenuse, 8 over 10, all right? 4 over 5, I'll say 80 over 100, just to avoid confusion. That's cosine. And then, and this is like where it makes it harder than the last problem, is you got to do a little bit more fancy arithmetic, but like this is 1 over a fraction, so that just becomes the reciprocal of the denominator. So that's 100 over 80 is secant theta. So let's plug this guy, oops, let's plug this guy up in here for secant squared, or for secant theta, and we get um, 100 over 80 squared times d theta dt equals 1 over 80, and then what is dx dt? Again, we're evaluating the instant given, so this, this variable, dx dt, we look at our instant picture, we wrote down that it's negative 9. Um, all right, so we have our differentiated equation and uh, evaluate, it's evaluated at the instant given. So then step six is solve. And what do I mean by solve? I just mean look back up at what our goal was, which is d theta dt. We have that in here somewhere. It's not isolated yet. That's what we do in step six. We isolate it. So d theta dt, you move the 100 over 80 squared to the other side. And you get an expression like this. And this all evaluates out when you plug it into a calculator to become negative 0.072. And what are the units? Well, what, what do you think? This is um, d theta would be units of radians. And then dt would be units of, I think everything else was in units of seconds, right? Yeah, feet per second. So time, time is in seconds. We didn't convert any of our units. So this is radians per second. Um, and I don't know how nitpicky your, your professor is, but this asks specifically what's the rate that she's turning the flashlight. So you can't be turning a flashlight at a negative rate per se. I don't, I don't really know. I hope your professor's not very picky. Um, but I would, I would probably put, if I was taking this test, I would put positive uh, 0.072. And I would hope that if they're nitpicky, and there's like a miscommunication that they would see my work and they would give me the points. But that's the answer. It's right here. So um, this is a really good framework and I encourage you to not uh, rely on it too hard to the point where you don't study anymore beyond just learning this framework. Because I think the best way to, to really master optimization and related rates, which like I said at the beginning are often the, the two most feared topics in Calc 1, best way to master them is to just drill practice problems. Um, you'll find there's a lot of like typical related rates problems like the, the cone shape filling up with water, the ladder problem. Um, and so as long as you just like drill problems, get a lot of exposure to the breadth of problems and that you can see, uh, you're going to get a lot more confidence. Um, and, you, and you pair that with a framework like this when you're showing your work on the test, no problem. And I wish you the best of luck.